as maximum sports performance is more and more carefully analyzed and dictated by professional and college teams, one of the most basic nutrients is emerging as something that may give athletes an edge. Vitamin D. WSJ reporter Rachel Bachman and Randy Burr, director of sports nutrition at the University of Virginia, join us now to discuss. Rachel and Randy, welcome to both of you. Rachel, let me start with you. In your reporting, how prevalent is vitamin D becoming as a recommended supplement for athletes? And is this just part of a larger push to maximize performance? It is part of a larger push. Some teams also test for things like magnesium and iron levels, uh, but vitamin D has really become an emphasis. And I've found people in um, all major sports leagues, the U.S. men's and women's soccer team, and of course in college sports that are testing their athletes for vitamin D levels and in some cases supplementing them. So interesting. So Randy, how important do you personally believe vitamin D is to performance? And what is the daily dose you recommend to UVA athletes? Sure, I think it's extremely important, uh, not just to performance, but overall health. Uh, we recommend 2,000 units, international units of vitamin D every day, and that's something I make available to our athletes here. And that's something you've been doing for several years, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, ever since arriving at UVA in 2010, uh, I've implemented policy that we can provide 2,000 international units of vitamin D uh, to all of our athletes. That sounds great. Now, Rachel, what is the science? What do studies of vitamin D and athletes tell us? And what about the larger studies of vitamin D on military populations? Well, the, the two most interesting studies, I think, are more recent ones on the NFL Steelers and Giants. And those show a, quite a strong association between muscle and bone injuries and vitamin D deficiency. And so there might be some real breakthroughs to be made in getting players up to optimal vitamin D ranges. And as far as the larger studies, um, those are quite small studies, larger studies with military populations show a decrease in uh, stress fractures when, uh, c when soldiers are given calcium and vitamin D supplementation. Interesting. Now, Randy, what are the ways that you recommend getting vitamin D? I mean, of course you can take it in a supplement, but is it better to get it from food or from the sun? And I'm just curious about sunblock. We're told to wear it in the sun. Does that mean we're also blocking vitamin D? Sure. Uh, I always have a food first philosophy. Uh, so if we can get it from our food, uh, that would be optimal. Uh, the problem is most of our foods do not have enough vitamin D. Wild salmon probably has the most vitamin D. Uh, and it has about 900 units uh, per serving, but I'm targeting 2,000. Uh, so odds of getting enough is very slim. So there's no danger of getting too much? Uh, there's still a chance for toxicity, uh, but you have to get extremely high levels of vitamin D for toxic levels. And then as far as your question about sunblock, uh, sunblock blocks UV rays. It's the UV rays that interact with the D cholesterol in our skin that convert to vitamin D. So yes, sunblock blocks vitamin D. So it's still safe. Safest thing would be to put on sunblock, protect your skin, but take a vitamin D supplement. All right, that's there you have it. Now, Rachel, are athletes with darker skin in danger of having lower vitamin D levels, and why is that? They are. In fact, they often do have lower D levels, and that's because dark skin blocks this process we talked about with the sun. The sun, you know, ingests, the, the skin essentially ingests the sun and converts it to D in the body. And so um, the, the African-American athletes, for instance, are at a higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. Sounds like we can all use a little bit more vitamin D. I think I'm going to go buy myself a supplement today. Rachel and Randy, thanks to both of you for that.